Well, here we are today. We're adding to the scrap metal pile. We figured we would pull this truck in and pull the brakes and stuff off of it. That's going to add up into some nice scrap metal here. Since metal, scrap metal's paying so high, so this is a freight liner here. Um, we usually have flotation tires on this truck and so that we could haul corn with it, we ended up putting the narrow tires on it. And um, we got done with harvest here back in November or December. And we're finally getting this in the shop here. And uh, they're doing the brakes on it. As long as we have to switch the wheels over. Uh, we had a couple of broken springs here in the, oh, in the brake chamber, in the brake, um, Oh, the brake shoe return springs were broke. I think he had three of the axe, three of the wheels out of the four were broke. He's got a wheel seal here that he's replacing along with the bearings. And what do you got, one on the other side too, Trev? Yeah. Yeah. He's got a couple of wheel seals he's gonna go ahead and replace. Tim's gonna get some parts here sometime. I don't know when, but He's getting sick of doing these parts runs, so. <laughs> yeah. So we're dumping the oil out of it here too. Lukens is trying to get the filter off of it and back on again. And this truck here had a uh, tire blowout and ended up blowing this inner fender and we're finally gonna be getting some parts for that. Tim ended up finding some stuff online here, so. You got a filter for your truck? Okay. So, we'll step over in next door here and this 4020 is getting smaller by the minute. So they ended up getting the wheels off of here a little while ago, along with the weights. And the, uh, oh, they took the, the front weights off as well. And then they also re removed the, uh, what's called the starter. And what the starter is, is the arms that come down the side for the weight bracket assembly. And then this is the, the starter itself so that you can put two weights, one on top of each other. And then here are the weights right here. Uh, I think on these older 20 series tractors, you can come out seven wide. And you could put a, a total of 14 of those little 50 pound weights on the front. If you don't have that starter and you have the regular short little uh, weight assembly, you only have one of them, one of them weights tall. But it's actually nice to have the two years ago when we um, did small bales, this building here was just a storage building and what we would do is pull wagons and of course that loft wasn't in there Mez mezzanine wasn't in there and we would come in that other end and we would stage wagons on uh, either side and then as we got past the center door we'd have to push the wagons in it worked great with this tractor because they had the front weights on there so Jared has got his steering column in there. We'll visit that in a minute here. Jaden is sanding down uh, new parts. And these are parts that Jared has ordered and we need to get the paint off that they have on here so that when we go to paint it, it's got, you know, everything matches. Everything's gonna be all the same color. So he's got the floorboard that he's got done and then these are the pieces that go around uh, the seats, the rock shaft covers. Um, somebody was asking where you got the steering column and somebody was wanting to know where you got the floorboard. You could answer that quick. Abilene machine, I think. Uh, All right, you got the steering column, Abilene machine, and the floorboard? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. What he's what he's doing here now is he wants to hook the the batteries up, get it running, 
and make sure that steering valve's not leaking at all. He ended up replacing some of the lines on it and he just wants to make sure that nothing leaks. He ordered a wire harness for it and we're gonna put the wire harness on it after it's painted. So you can see we've got some crap to get removed there. We're gonna get the wheels off of it here momentarily as well, but just kind of moving along kind of slowly here on this. The boys are changing the oil on this. Oh, it's a Volvo. It used to be a road tractor. We bought it from a neighbor a few years ago. Came with a tag along trailer. We'll move the bulldozer around with it occasionally. The excavator and whatever. They've got to replace the muffler on it. It's got more or less an open exhaust on it. It's also got problems with the uh, airlock assembly here we've got it it's all seized up Kerr's gonna try to get it operational again here so it looks like the spreader plate's been backed into a couple times huh seen better days got figured out what you're gonna do there um all right i think it's pretty seized up hard to try to that one clevis down underneath there the one that's connected directly to this yeah I'd have to cut it off and weld on a new one, I don't know. I've got all them parts here somewhere. So, so she's just getting an oil change and a basic service. And uh, we'll show you what I'm doing over next door on this truck of my uncle's here. So, did you get all new cables for this or just the ones you needed? All new. All new? All right, so we've got some material patched in over our rotted posts here, and I'm gonna get welding that, and then we'll move along to the other side here and get that welded in as well. All right, he's gonna start it up here. He hasn't run it yet since that steering's been hooked up. He's not sure if that's Alright, get it to center. Count A. Hey, get it to center and then count your turns each way to stop. Two and a half. What is that? About two and a half. Each way, five all together. One and a half. Regardless, it's the same each way, right? Yeah. The trucks, they, they are like three and a half or something. Does it turn? Does it turn like shot off? All right, shut it off. All right, we've got these posts all capped. We had three to do on this side and one to do over on the driver's side. Now, uh, what we'll do in the morning, the boys have actually left here for the night. We're going to have to do some work to this tailgate. We're going to cut the grain spout off and fix that one post right there. And uh, once we get that done, we've got to do some work on the inside, uh, patch the sidewalls there. There's a couple of spots where the sidewall is rusted out, uh, where the posts are. And then we'll build our topper extension to go around the rest of the uh, cab shield. Now this box here I built in 2006. It's got six foot high sides on it. And this one here I built in 2012. And this one's seven foot tall. The cab shield's a little different on this one. I tried to maximize the amount of space that I had there 
and that actually you can fill that cab shield and we have that uh, set up on all the trucks that we have um, we can get a yard and a half to two yards of material up on the, the cab shield there so this body here is built slightly different than the other one and that one there it doesn't have this little skirt material here um, that comes down against the rub rail i started doing these a few years after uh, i was doing uh, those ones there now this one has got the uh, 10 spring um, tarp arm uh, unit there and you can see this one is it's in pretty good shape yet and then this one over here on the floor is uh, just loaded uh, loaded with rust so this box here is in pretty good shape it's uh, as good as it was the day I built it um, we had to put some uh, cylinders on here they were hauling big bales the other day and they um, had a bale come down and rip them off so uh, they got that fixed but that's the two similarities between um, these two boxes here um, I started doing them this way it works out real good when you have material that gets spilled over the side it doesn't set on this rub rail here and it just kind of falls right off and then the, the other advantage of building them this way you can actually wash them a lot easier like when you get the, the starch from the corn silage uh, on the body you can scrub it with a brush a lot easier than something that's got a 90 degree corner so it's kind of built like a um, gravel truck and I see we've got some paint missing right here it's took it right down to the red oxide primer but um, pressure washer must have got after that a little bit we should go through and touch that paint up and then we got some scratches uh, in the side there from something running down along that box I cannot figure out what it is but um, we put this piece on the side here so that when the tarp arm comes back it doesn't get caught into the tailgate there and then when I built this, I didn't build it out far, build it out far enough. So we've got this piece of poly on there. And what that actually is, is a alley scraper material. So that's just used to keep the arms out away from the arm there on the tailgate. So we'll touch base with you tomorrow once we get, uh, working on this truck again here and i would say another pretty good day on this one and we'll be able to throw some paint on it so uh, we'll touch base tomorrow